Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this interesting little light right here. This is the Claris XT11 GT flashlight. Um, first off, though, I want to thank my buddy Mitch for sending this guy along. He was interested in doing a, uh, a donation, basically, where he'd send the light to the channel, then I'd send it along to another reviewer afterwards. So, uh, that's a great thing. I mean, because it allows pass-arounds, all those kinds of things. This is heading to my buddy Metal Effort next. Um, you should check his channel out. He's awesome, too. But anyways, um, this is a very interesting light here from Claris a brand that I hadn't looked at before, and so I wanted to, uh, you know, take a look here. Um, to start with, uh, let's do a quick size comparison here. Here this guy is against a, your uh, standard 18650 battery here, your standard AA battery right here, and your standard CR123 battery right here. Um, and so this is not a tiny particular little light over here. Here it is against your uh, Spydeco Delica. So again, yeah, it's not big, or it's not particularly small. Here it is against a standard uh, ruler right here, so you can see in terms of overall length we are a little bit over uh, a little over 14 centimeters there and your diameter is looking to be around an inch and oh about three and a half centimeters um anyways i'm just gonna switch units over and over again to bother people um so they, they, there you go that's fun and then actually some comparisons against other lights here here it is against the um the uh, through night uh, neutron 2c your EGTAC D25A, which is one of my very favorite small carry lights. And then finally, the um, uh, Night Court 10,000 Lumens uh, uh, flashlight there. So you can take a look at that. And what the heck, the um, Through Night TC20 which is another uh, serious business sort of small light. So um, there you go. Then finally, uh, one thing to note, this light is tactical as heck. I mean, it is hard to describe how tactical this light is except by this juxtaposition right here. That's right. It doesn't get much more tactical than what's on the frame right now. I mean, seriously, the tactics are just sheeting off of this guy like sparkles off a unicorn. This is seriously tactical. That means I'm probably not the best person to review it because I'm more of a strategic person. But by God, I'm going to do my best to try. But do keep that in mind as I'm talking about this, that some of the things I discuss may be different for you if you are high speed, low drag, as opposed to myself who is low speed and high drag. So there you go. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting, very tactical light. So on the bright side, uh, oh God, I... <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. On the good side, this light is overwhelmingly bright. Um, that is their wording on their website. Overwhelmingly bright. Um, they're claiming that this is 10,000, I'm sorry, uh, 2,000 lumens on the turbo mode. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure about that because I did some comparison against this guy, which is advertised at 1,100 lumens, and this guy, which is advertised at 2,000 lumens. It's seeming pretty similar, even in a dark room. I'm not 100% sure. It just didn't feel brighter. And honestly, the jump from uh, 2,000 to 400 lumens doesn't feel that big. Now, but the thing is, lumens are deceptive, certainly. It is the case that certainly, you know, lumens can act a little bit differently, being logarithmically scaled and whatnot. But still, I am not a... I, I, I'm a little skeptical there. And uh, the simple fact is, no matter what else, I am not overwhelmed by the brightness of this light. Um, th That said, it is plenty bright. It has four different modes. Actually, five, if you want to count the disco mode. We have a turbo mode, uh, which gives you 50 minutes, five zero minutes of runtime, and they're claiming that's 2,000 lumens. Maybe it is, for all I know. I don't have the equipment to test. Um, it has a 400 lumen high mode, a 100 lumen medium mode, and a low uh, mode at 10 lumens. And by the way, you get 50 minutes at turbo, uh, 3.5 hours at high, 12 hours at medium, 170 hours at low. And then it also has a, a very well, and by the way, some flashing lights here, so be careful, uh, the epileptics. But um, it has a disco mode. Um, in this guy associated with it for uh, strobing. All you need to do is press this little back button that turns on your disco mode. And they specify that disco mode can run 1.7 hours. Now, look, it's very hard to think about time scale, uh, you know, running uh, a disco mode for, for 1.7 hours. So I figured I'd give you some comparisons here. Um, if you turn on the disco mode for 1.7 hours, um, that allows you to uh, play Donna Summer and Giorgio Moroda's seminal pre-electronica hit, I Feel Love, a total of 17 times on a loop. That's some pretty serious business right there, but I'm afraid you'll need to bring some extra 18650 batteries to match the 12-hour glow stick your hippie chicks are going to be twirling at said rave. So anyways, um, that, but that, it, you do get a full 1.7 hours of disco mode, which is a whole bunch of dancing. But you get those four modes with reasonable run times. That's something you want to keep in mind. Next thing, this guy has the tactical crenellations on the front of it there. Um, these are, it is a crenellated strike bezel. Crenelles, of course, being the things at the top of a castle that allow arches. So that means if you have miniature arches, they can stand in between here and take 
you know, a cover in between shooting their bow. Um, but this is actually a removable ring, so you can take the crenellations off and then just have an unassuming flashlight. The only reason this is useful is that in some situations, um, people consider this to become a weapon, um, uh, versus, uh, something like, uh, this, which is no longer a weapon. Look, whatever. Um, but it's nice that they can be taken off. If nothing else, it's a weight reduction for people who don't plan to ever hit somebody with a flashlight. So, there you go. Next thing, this has different modes, um, different setting mode. Not like, uh, turbo low, medium, high, but they have a tactical mode, they have the advanced tactical mode, and they have an outdoor mode. Um, and the outdoor mode, for instance, makes low the default. It changes what each of these little buttons do, and we'll talk about the different buttons in a second here. The advanced tactical turns off side switch altogether for your advanced high-speed, low-drag tactics. Um, but nevertheless, it has some different modes that you can change the light into using a, you know, a kind of arcane procedure they've got in their manual there. That's good. It allows you to reconfigure the light if you, you know, don't want it to be tactical, although if you don't want it to be tactical, this ain't the light for you anyways. But still, it's something to keep in mind. Um, it is a very spotty light. You know, I can kind of show this off here. And by the way, if you're asking, where are the beam shots? Dude, I film on a phone. You can't do good beam shots on a phone. My apologies. Try another review. But it is a very spotty light. As you can see here, it just goes straight into one point here. There is some overspill on the outsides there, but it is mostly designed to spot. Um, and I, I will say that given that spot, if it is aimed properly, the strobe light does absolutely suck to look into directly. I had my wife try it just because why the heck not, and oh my god, does that suck. So, you know, they, 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 it's certainly bright. In that case, it is a little overwhelming. But nevertheless, um, you get a very spotty brightness, and that can make the strobe mode actually meaningfully important if you are actually flashing people for some reason. Not flashing in that sense. Flashing in this sense. But anyways, there you go. And then finally, on the good side, it has basic water resistance as well as a micro USB recharge. Under this little flap here is a micro USB port. You can just plug in any USB cable and note the copious clearance here for USB cables, which allows you to recharge this light without any, um, you know, fancy specialized charges, things like that. That is just, for me, a CD qua non, absolutely necessary for any modern flashlight. So those are the good things. It is micro USB rechargeable, basic water resistance. It is very spotty, um, which means you can both see things far away from you, and the strobe light really does kind of suck um, to look the wrong direction from. Uh, you have different settings to make out, you know, load the default to turn off the side switch if that's your style. You can remove the crenellations there. Um, you have four modes, turbo, high, medium, and low, as well as your disco mode, which you get a full 1.75 hours of dance out of, and uh, it is actually a relatively bright light, although perhaps not overwhelmingly so. So on the, uh, that's all the good. On the great side, um, this light actually has an interesting control layout that is both the great and the ugly. We'll talk about that in a second. But you actually have different controls on the front and the back. So if I use the front button here. Oh, I had it in lockout mode. We'll get there. Um, if I hit the front button here, it starts off in this current mode, which is the tactical mode at high, and then if I hit it again, it goes down to, uh, sorry, it starts off turbo, then goes to high, medium, then goes down to a low mode, still on, but it's pretty low. So that's the side switch, and then to turn it off, it goes all the way off. But on the back side here, you have a separate set of controls, where in the back, if you just hold down the back, it goes straight to turbo, and it gives you momentary on, where you don't have to do the full click. If you do the full click, it puts you into turbo, and it stays that way. And then on the other side here, you've got your disco lever here, um, which if I press this, turns on disco mode straightforwardly. So um, they, there you go. Um, and that also, by the way, if you have the light already on, hitting the disco lever does change the brightness mode normally and takes you out of the disco country. Um, and so there you go. Um, that, that The fact that you've got this set up here actually does make some sense. There are going to be times when you're going to want to control it from the side, and in which case you'll use the side lamp, and there are going to be times when you're holding it more like this when you just need a lot of brightness quickly, or when you want to just hit this guy and go Disco, if you're uh, thinking about this for self-defense, um, th th you know, that gives you that option there. So um, I, I will say that uh, control setup of having both uh, easily accessible from the front and the back is kind of a nice thing. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that as great because it's one of the slightly more unique things this light is doing. On the bad side, price on this guy is a little high. It's 85 bucks, although it seems to be one of those lights where it must have like a map or something like that because you just see it on Amazon bundled with a bunch of crap. Um, you know, like, oh, you've included a, you know, cigarette lighter charger for your USB cable and a USB cable and here a battery case. And like, okay, whatever. But still, um, th th that seems to be the price for it. You can definitely find better night, uh, better lights for less depending on your needs. Um, particularly if you're not a high speed, low drag operator, but you know, price wise, it's a 
little high, but it's not so terrible. Um, next thing, the pocket clip on this guy is a little silly. The reason I say that is because, A, when you put it into something, this much of the light is hanging out. So this isn't really a jeans pocket sort of light, particularly given the fact that the, uh, the well, the width of the thing is so damn high. If we measure the, the, the diameter of this guy here, we are coming in here at uh, 34.9 millimeters, roughly, and 1.3 inches. Oh, helps if I put that on the screen. That's a fair amount of bulk to carry around in there. That's a, is that a, is that a Claris in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? It's the Claris in this case. Maybe both. I don't know. But nevertheless, um, it means that you are really not going to want to carry this around in your pocket here. And so if you're putting it in a pouch or something, then great. Okay, whatever. But probably not a uh, pocket sort of light. By the way, the little disco switch at the top is definitely kind of rattly. You can hear that going on there. Not the uh, best thing ever. Next thing, um, this guy does not tail stand. What I mean by that is that a lot of good lights have a flat surface on the back there, which allow you to stand it up like that. You're thinking, Nick, why would you do that? Well, the, the simple answer is because let's say you want to light up a room or a tent or something like that. Um, you want to be able to do that. This guy falls over. Um, it's probably as a result of the disco switch here. And, you know, there may be ways. Actually, it's falling towards the disco switch, so I don't freaking know. But either way, they have not done a great job of allowing this to tail stand. Ergonomically speaking, it makes sense for this kind of usage but it's something he sacrificed. Um, speaking of sacrifices, honestly, the tactical stuff doesn't necessarily make sense for daily life. Start with, it is a very spotty light. And, you know, spot is great if you're doing search and rescue and... I don't know, dispatching tangos or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm sure that works great. But the thing is, for most people on a regular basis, you're probably going to want a wider spread. Because if you're, for instance, crawling behind a desk or you're in a server room or something like that where the lights aren't on, this is a situation where you're going to want a little bit more breadth of light rather than distance. Um, for me, the majority of my flashlight use tends to be indoors during the day rather than outdoor search and rescue. And so for me, spotty isn't necessarily the thing I need. Um, one other thing to note is that this guy in both modes comes on the high. Um, and that can be changed if you go to the outdoor mode. So can the easy to hit disco mode because not everybody, and that is very easy to hit by the way, accidentally. A couple of times I went to turn this on and I, I alternated between flash and disco, which was weird walking down the street, you know, whatever. Um, but anyways, it, it's definitely, uh, the, 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 the tactical thing is meant for tactics and switching to the outdoors mode thing. Yeah, that works, but honestly, there were better lights for just outdoorsing. So, um, I think this is a light that is really overfitted for the tactical world. It's perfect if you're that domain, but not that great for most other folks. One other area where this is missing out is in a moonlight mode. Lots of lights have a super, super low uh, amplitude mode. Uh, where it goes to just like one lumen or something like that. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's silly. Why would you ever do that? Well, the, the, the answer is actually quite simple. Night vision. Um, there are definitely times where you're going to want to look at something in the dark, but not sacrifice your night vision. And if you go straight to high mode, oh my God, is it gone for? Uh, you are freaking over. So the fact that this doesn't offer a moonlight mode in any of its modes is not great. Then finally, there is a lot of color variation throughout the beam. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, given the fact that I'm filming with a phone, but you can see here that we actually start off, and in the middle there, you can't see it here, but there is an area of kind of an amber light, then there's a cool blue, then there's a warm yellow, then there's more cool blue around the outside side there. If you hold this up against the wall, and especially a distant one, you see lots of variation, both in brightness and in color. This is not amazing. I mean, sure, it's throwing a lot of lumens, and it doesn't matter if you're, you know, flashing this at somebody and starting a dance party, but at the same time, this is not necessarily great for everyday use. Like I said, um, there are much better lights out there in terms of both color and uniformity of brightness. I'm not a big fan of the beam pattern here. So, to me, that's what's bad, is that you've got a lot of color variation throughout the beam, no moonlight mode, and some of the other tactical decisions don't make a lot of sense for most everyday people. Um, it doesn't tail stand. It has a silly pocket clip. The uh, little disco switch is a little radley, and the price is a bit high. On the ugly front, unfortunately, they all kind of boil down to the, the, the interface here, which I did like, by the way. I think it is kind of a nice idea, but it has a lot of weird interactions. So, for instance, let's say I turn the light on using this switch on the front here. Now I want to turn it off, and I'm, I'm holding it like this. So what do I do? I click the back switch. No, that didn't work, but if I click it again... That turns off. Okay, okay. So that's a little weird. It required two clicks rather than the intuitive one, but whatever. Now I'm going to turn it on in the back switch. Then I'm going to hold this guy down to turn it off. No, it flashes once to tell me that, no, you can't turn me off this way. So if you turn it on with the back switch, you can only turn it off with the back switch. If you turn it on with the side switch, you can turn it off with the back switch, but you have to hit it twice. 
Yeah, you heard me. This is a little weird. And that's similarly in lockout mode. So this light does have a lockout mode. Um, for instance, watch this. I'm going to turn this guy off. Then I'm going to hold this down for five seconds. We're going to see that it's going to flash twice. That indicates I'm in lockout mode. Okay, now if I press this side button, nothing doing. It doesn't... Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, because I hit it three times, and that's the lockout mode disabled. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, I'll put it back into lockout mode here. That's a very widely spaced three times. But okay, if I hit the button once, you see it flashes. It says, I've got power, but you're in lockout mode, you idiot. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, great, it's in lockout mode. I can't turn anything on. Yeah, you can. If you use the back switch or the disco switch, it still turns on lockout mode. And in fact, once you're in this, the side switch is locked out, so I can no longer control the mode using the side, but I can do it from the back. So the software lockout only affects the front switch. You may be thinking to yourself, well, okay, that's fine. What if you only want to use the front switch? Okay, well, maybe. Then turn that off using the... Then you've got a hardware lockout. And you're thinking, oh, okay, great. So that means I can lock out the light. So what I'm going to do here is I'll, I'll turn it on here, and then I'm going to slowly unscrew this. Okay. So you're thinking, okay, great. It's hardware locked out. Nope. No, the hardware lockout stops this switch from working, but not this switch. So now I can no longer use this guy up top here, but I can still turn it on using this. So the hardware lockout doesn't lock out both switches. So there is actually not a single locker. In order to fully lock out this light such that things don't turn on accidentally, what you actually have to do is first software lock out the back side and then hardware lock, or I'm sorry, software lock out the front side, then hardware lock out the back side. Then there is no way that you can turn this guy back on unless you twist this guy or hit this uh, three times. Guys, this is complicated. Um, This is really complicated. I, and of course, you can get a full hardware lockout if you do this. Now it's not turning on, but that's not exactly what a lockout mode is supposed to be, people come on. So I'm really actually not a big fan of the lockout situation here because it's just complicated. And honestly, that is my biggest gripe with this light generally is it is just complicated. Here, for instance, let me show you the mode diagram from the manual to this light. I just printed this out. This is one of three mode diagrams. This is for the tactical setting. So this is because you have all of these different switches, each one of these little trees, and given it's actually from an information you know perspective, this is nicely formatted and whatnot, but holy crap, is this complicated. Do we need it to be this complicated? I don't personally think so. And so this is sort of in that weird level where it's kind of customizable, but it's not as customizable as the ones with actual custom firmware where you can really, you know, set your light up to look exactly as you want it to using arcane, you know, means. This guy has a bunch of different possible settings, but none of them are super intuitive. And these tree diagrams are a little much, and, you know, I consider myself to be a relatively smart person, although occasionally not a brilliant man. And this is just kind of weird. Guys, it, it, so I feel like this is just a weird, unintuitive place. It's some place in that, you know, compare that to, for instance, this guy. This is the Through Night 2C. You press the button, it turns on, you hold the button and watch it's going to get dimmer and now it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter then at the top it's going to flash and then if I hit the button again it turns off that's a pretty easy sort of interface there is literally one button and two things you can do with it you can hold it down to change the brightness or you can click it to turn it on or off Easy freaking peasy. And they also add in that you can double click for turbo and such. But that's, this is just a super complicated setup. And so it ended up in a situation where more often than most flashlight reviews, I found myself looking at the manual. And for something that is high speed, low drag tactical, supposed to work even in situations where you are deeply distracted, looking at the manual is not necessarily an option. I'm picturing some Navy freaking seal in a trench someplace. Trench, what is this, World War One? Anyways, nevertheless, um, you know, sitting there on his iPhone looking up the manual for this guy trying to figure out how to turn it on to turbo mode. I, I'm, I'm being overdramatic there, but this is unintuitive. They have done a lot here, and at some level, that's got to be nice if you very specifically fit the set that they did, but... I don't know. I, I'd like it to either be intuitive or customizable, but this weird mix doesn't work for me. So that's the uglies, that it's super complicated. It has a confusing lockout situation with two different kinds of lockout required to lock out the entire light. And you have all these weird switch interactions that don't exactly work in the way that you expect them to. So there you go. Final conclusion, this is at some level a fine light, particularly if you find yourself in the market for something a little bit more tactical than everyday practical. 
It's a solid choice. It's bright, although not overwhelmingly. It's got most of the basic features you need. It, do, it does have a USB recharge, which is very good. Um, and it has a nice complement of UI options for your tactical crowd and a, a thoughtful complement of features. But you're paying a price. For instance, losing practical things like a moonlight mode, tail standing, or good coloration. You have a super spotty beam that's just not going to be ideal. Oh, why is this not turning on now? Come on, people. Do I, did I put the battery back in? See, this is my life here. Did I put the... Yeah, I put the battery back in off. Is it? Okay. That, that, that one's not the light. That's just the idiot here. <laughs> I consider myself a smart person, he says, as he installs the battery backwards. There we go. Problem solved. But anyways, um, this guy is... <laughs> Ah, uh, you should go and watch a review of this light from somebody who's not an idiot. Um, anyways, back at the ranch. Um, you pay a price here. You lose practical things. You get this super spotty beam that's just not going to be ideal for a lot of people. You get a lot of complexity with different switches interacting differently and a lot of opacity, leading the light to have something that felt a lot like a learning curve, and that's not something I'm super used to flashlights having. So if you just need a flashlight, honestly, this isn't the choice. If you're just watching this video because you're like, hey, I should buy a flashlight. I hear they're good these days. No, don't do this. Absolutely not. There are better everyday carry lights that are available way cheaper damn near everywhere. I mean, this guy, the Through Night 2C, is probably my favorite at this point just because it's 50 bucks and it has a very nice UI and it's simple and it's a little bit better suited to everyday life. So that's a really nice option. And it's a little bit more practical than tactical. And, you know, yeah. But if you are after something, if you are, you know, taking your op open L, your, your high-speed low-drag gloves and such, or you're, you're operating operationally in the theater and whatnot, this might not be a bad choice because it is really designed for your needs. You can probably learn all your way around all the weirdness, maybe even embrace and love it. But it's also still not the only choice. I mean, the thing is, you can't type in FL on Amazon without 50 new brands trying to sell you an overwhelmingly bright 3,000 lumen tactical crenellated strike basil flashlight. Oh my god. Um, they are just freaking everywhere. And so this is the very first of these I've featured on the channel. Maybe even the last of them. I'm just not a uh, tactical operator. But nevertheless, um, it's probably not the best of them out there. And so I think you should do your research, talk to somebody who's not an idiot, and ideally is an actual tactician, um, rather than some random jackass on the internet. But mostly, I think my feeling here is know what you're getting into. If everything I'm describing sounds like, oh my god, that's absolutely perfect for my life, because I jump out of airplanes on a regular basis perfectly well-functioning airplanes, that is, um, th th then okay, sure, have fun, why not? Go for it. Um, Because if you're liking what this offers, you're willing to pay the price, then it'll absolutely work well. But otherwise, I think there are clearly other choices for you in the flashlight market. So there you go. I hope this was interesting and that you have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.